Now, a Chilean-American journalist who's been covering the conflict from inside Ukraine has reportedly gone missing in the city of Kharkov. Fellow reporters now fear for his life, saying Gonzalo Lira has been out of contact since last Friday. Extremely troubling that Gonzalo Lira, a U.S. citizen in Ukraine, has disappeared from social media. He was scheduled to interview me last Friday about Zelensky's SBU kidnapping and assassinating dissidents, and now I fear he has become its latest victim. If Gonzalo Lira has indeed been disappeared by Ukraine's SBU, he joins a long list of dissidents, leftists, human rights activists, and local officials kidnapped, tortured and even assassinated by Zelensky's death squads, and with Kiev's open support. Meanwhile, one of Ukraine's nationalist leaders has posted a series of tweets in his private account, mockingly claiming the journalist might have been abducted and killed by, quote, some guy with the call sign Chile. In other posts, he shows us a photo of neo-Nazi fighters, again, hinting they might be the ones behind the reporter's disappearance and even applauding the prospects of the journalist being dead. The radical Ukrainian commander hasn't provided any evidence, though, so the information cannot be immediately verified. Gonzalo Lira is 54 years old and has been living in Ukraine for the past few years. He was in Kiev when the conflict erupted in February and then travelled to Kharkov to cover the fighting there. He has repeatedly criticised the Ukrainian government and armed forces for their actions. At the end of March, he tweeted that, the, that he called the truth about Zelensky's regime, adding uh, he might disappear, as, as did other critics of Kiev, some of whom were later found dead. Here's one of Gonzalo Lira's latest interviews before he went missing. NATO never um, allowed Ukraine to join formally, but informally they established training bases, especially in Western Ukraine, and they trained all of the Ukraine uh, military in NATO tactics, NATO communications methods. So in a very real sense, the Ukrainian armed forces were NATO, but they also integrated these neo-Nazi hyper-nationalist elements, not just into the armed forces, by the way, but also into the government itself. And these neo-Nazi, extreme nationalist, um, extreme Ukrainian nationalist uh, elements uh, sort of poisoned the well. All of a sudden, the Ukrainian state became rapidly anti-Russian. And this expressed itself in the government itself uh, and also in its armed forces. There is constant shelling of the Donbass region, of the breakaway public republics of uh, Lugansk and Donetsk. And over the years, well, about 16,000 people were killed there, um, needlessly. And it was really because of the aggression of the Ukraine regime, which never wanted to negotiate with the people of the breakaway republics, uh, and pushed forward this extreme, radical Ukrainian nationalism well, we've requested an update on the journalist's status and location from the Chilean Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the U.S. St the Department of State since Gonzalo Lira holds a dual citizenship. So far, there's been no response, but we'll keep you posted on that.